Today we're going to look at the lookup transformation within Azure Data Factory's mapping data flows. I've had quite a few requests to dive into the lookup transformation. I think a lot of that comes from SSIS users who are used to the lookup transformation and data flows there. And uh, when they come over to EDF, you notice some slight differences and nuances in the lookup in uh, Data Factory's data flow that are a little bit different than SSIS. So let me walk you through it. Um, so what I have for the sample data today is I'm using um, a dim dimension table, so dim employee down here. This is a uh, database, uh, an Azure SQL database source type, and I'll give you the projection. So this is having a schema within it, and I have an employee ID with a few properties of that dimension member. And then I have a fact table. So this is going to be sort of a quasi sort of... Um, you know, fact loading scenario with a lookup in it. So, but very simple just for demo purposes. My fact table is also a Azure SQL database and I'm using the fact table and the projection there is a series of measures for those employees. All right, so now that we have the source, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that lookup. So the lookup that you'll do and very commonly in a star schema scenario with a fact table is you're going to look for the ID that coming in from the measures, look those measures up against the dimension table so that uh, you can find other properties from that surrogate key. So we're doing the lookup. Now the lookup here is employee ID on the left hand side, which is the fact table. The right hand side is the employee emp ID. Now on the lookup, uh, I commonly recommend to you to try the broadcast push down join operation. The lookup acts like a left outer join in Azure Data Factory. And what you can do here is you can see that I know my div employee table is pretty static and it's not very large. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask ADF to uh, push that down to all of the nodes within the Spark cluster that's being used so that the joins can occur within the um, memory space of each of the workers. In addition to that, I'm going to, after I look up, I'm going to use the isMatch function. Okay, so that's the basics of the, of the lookup. That's pretty straightforward and pretty simple from a basics perspective. What happens next is, um, typically within lookup functions or lookup transformations, you're going to want to do two additional things. One is you're going to want to find which rows matched, which ones didn't, and then you want to only have uh, either the first or the last match if you have multiple matches on the right-hand side. And so what, the way that we accomplish that in Data Factory, Mapping Data Flow, is you use the isMatch function. Just type in isMatch with open parentheses. And I'm doing that within a drive column and assigning that to a column I'm calling match. So match will store the Boolean row by row, whether or not each match was found on the right-hand side lookup or not. What I can do then is a conditional split. So my conditional split We'll simply use that Boolean match and it'll give me two streams, the is match and the no match. You can call this whatever you like, yes match, no match, some, um, whatever. But you can then take the uh, stream that has a match and you can then perform the next step, which is to then take the multiple matches, if you have multiple matches, and you can condense that down into just one. So the way that you do that is that you create an aggregation. So I call my aggregation pick first. In my case, I chose first. I only need these three columns. So I'm saying the first match in each of these. Now, if I go back to my is match conditional split on the preview, you'll see that I do have multiple matches on the right-hand side. And so I have all of these rows. And that's not what I want. I just want to rate one fact. And so I chose to pick the first. When you pick first, then you will end up with just the single match. Your other option would be to say last. So within the um, within the aggregation, instead of first, you would just change that to last, reach of the columns that you want, and then you get the last match um, for that. So that's how you do the uh, pick first to last. You have different rows or different streams for matching or not matching on your lookup and how you create the lookup. 